Simon Popple is a commodity investment expert and director of Brookville Capital. He provides weekly research on commodity companies for those who want to diversify their portfolio and hopefully retire earlier. So, Simon, you know what? I think your advice is pretty age agnostic and um, something that affects us all, regardless of age, is inflation. So I'm wondering how that plays into the commodity mix. Right. Well, I mean, I, I think inflation, you've got a, a choice of, of doing sort of two things. You can either sort of lean into it or panic. And um, I think a lot of people, if I'm honest, are panicking. But um, if you lean into it, what I mean by that is um, you should be looking to invest in areas that are going to go up in price. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll give you a great example. You know, you can't print commodities, you can't print food. And therefore, you know, they're going up in price. Um, there's not much you can do about it um, unless you invest in them. And if you invest in them, at least you're investing in something that is um, the source of, you know, your concerns, the source of inflation. And, um, uh, you can do nothing to stop inflation. I mean, inflation is, is, is there, um, you know, that, that's not really in our sort of ballpark to, to solve. But at least if you're investing in things that are going up in price, um, then, um, you know, hopefully life, life will be slightly less painful for you. I suppose inflation isn't the big, the big bad bogeyman that many people assume it is. So well, what you is what you're saying is go with the commodity price because it's much easier to pick winners when the resource prices are in a a bull market as some are at present. Yeah, I, exactly. I mean, I, I if you look at the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index, that's quite a good index to sort of um, have, 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 a, have, a, have a look at. But I mean, it, it's it's really kind of simple. I mean, if you spend uh, I know, a quarter of your monthly uh, income on petrol, then, uh, you know, perhaps a quarter on food and quarter on and, uh, heating. I mean, you should be investing in, in areas connected with that. So um, it, it, obviously you've got natural gas for heating. Um, oil is, you know, you're putting petrol in your car and food. So, you know, why not have a few investments in, in those areas? Because, um, you know, if you're worried about those going up in price, um, at least you can offset that to a point with some of your investments. So where do investors start? So you've just talked about the fuel that heats our homes. But of course, we've got to look at the, the companies and the entrepreneurs who are extracting those energy and the, the, the fuel components. So... What do you recommend? Do we go for the explorers, the developers, the producers? I think a lot depends on your appetite for risk. And I think there's no harm in having a, you know, a, bit, a, bit of, a bit of both or a bit of all of them, depending on, on how you break it down. But um, you know, personally, in commodities, I like to have a bit of all of them because um, it's, it, it, if you're in, let's say, a gold or silver, or copper, uh, producer, um, you, you've got a lot of exposure to to the spot price, which is you know really what what the inflation is. Um, but what I do like is a bit of the kind of, uh, for want of a better term, fantasy of having uh, you know an explorer. I mean, I, I I picked a few explorers for for my clients, um, including companies like Chalice that went up sixty five times, Tempest Minerals. Has had a very nice run. Dolly Varden's done pretty well. Tudor Gold's done pretty well. So you kind of want to have a bit of both because, uh, to be honest, if it, if an explorer comes comes off, and uh, the chances are, are obviously a lot less than 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 you'll get with with a with a producer. But to be honest, if, if an explorer comes off, you don't really care about the rest of your portfolio. But um, you can't just focus on a few explorers because um, you know there's a, there's a good chance they won't find anything so having some producers 
and developers in your portfolio. You know, it makes a lot of sense. I suppose it's all to do with the credentials of the management team, because a good team picks better projects and can make average projects work. And, and the converse for a poor team. So when you're stock picking, as it were, which is a very crude team, management must be the number one criteria. It's an, a very important criteria, you're absolutely right, but you have to be a little bit careful because um, some managers can be extraordinarily lucky and, um, you know, they can find a, a, an amazing discovery uh, that makes a lot of money to, for a lot of people. But um, I think that there's two points to note. You know, first of all, um, they could be lucky rather than gifted, which has uh, helped them achieve their, their aim. And secondly, uh, if you make a major discovery as a, as a significant shareholder, um, money is not on your radar as, as a major interest. I mean, um, you know, I'm not sure what the market value is of, of Chalice now, but I know it's in the billions. And when I first looked at it, it was probably about 45 million. So it, it, if something does come off in this space, uh, the ability to make huge amounts of money uh, is very real. And uh, so if, if, if you're backing a management team that, you know, collectively are worth a few hundred million dollars, um, I would sort of slightly question their level of motivation, um, you know, if, if, it, if it fails. So, and, and also, you know, how much money have they actually put, put in from themselves? Because, um, you know, it, 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 if, if they're worth 100 million and they've got 60 million in the project, that's some real skin in the game. But if it's worth 100 million and they've only got 2 million in the project, you know, that's not real skin in the game as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I suppose that's critical. Are the management aligned? Do they own stock or options packages, which, you know, is based around share price growth? In fact, there's many fund managers now who will not invest um, their funds money in a company unless management own at least 3%. 3% actually sounds quite paltry of the probable 100% that they could own. Actually, they couldn't because then there's no room for investors and it makes it for a very illiquid stock. But yeah, so it's all about being in alignment. Yeah, I, I, management is very important, but I, I think um, location for me is very important. I focus on companies in Canada, US, Australia, um, and I'm, there are some amazing mining companies in South America, Africa, and other parts of the world. But um, it's not only important to get return um, of, uh, on your capital, but you actually want return of your capital. And um, you know, if you have uh, an amazing mine in uh, a very remote country, um, nationalisation does happen where the government of that country just goes, actually, we quite like this mine. Uh, we'll nationalise it and we'll own it ourselves. And the poor shareholders um, have got little or no rights to, uh, you know, whatever the value of that mine is. And um, so, yes, you do have to be very careful. Yeah, because that happened recently with Santera Gold when the Kyrgyz government sort of took control of the Kumpto mine. I mean, that has since been resolved. That was resolved uh, last month. But which jurisdictions and locations do you do you like that you favour? Uh, well, I very much favour Australia, Canada and the US because I think that they've got... Um, you know they're viewed as safer mining jurisdictions um you know you've got places like chile and argentina for lithium for example but um you know chile have have actually gone on record to say that they're thinking about nationalizing their lithium um and you know other projects such as copper uh whether they do that or not is open to uh, a government debate um but yeah i mean there's some real risks uh, of those sort of countries and you know you, you may be an explorer finding phenomenal deposits but 
to get a copper mine into production can often cost a billion dollars. And, you know, who's going to write a check for a billion dollars if they're worried about losing it? So we're speaking in quite broad macro themes, but talk to me about your investment strategy. I'm intrigued by your three R's approach. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I think it's what I'm trying to do as much as anything is educate people about how to look at mining companies. And so the three R's, very simple, are risk. You know, you, you, you want to uh, invest in companies that suit your, your appetite for risk. So as I said earlier, if you, know, if, if you have got a lower appetite for risk, you may probably want to look at producers. If you've got a high appetite for risk, you perhaps want some uh, explorers. And what I do is I break it all down in a fancy football format. So I've got goalkeepers, defenders, midfielders and forwards. So um, if you're, you know, I, 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 I tell when I write companies up and research them, I say, look, this is a goalkeeper, this is a forward. So it helps people. Kind of on a former team, so to speak, because what you tend to find is people want a bit of bit of everything. Um, the so up, the first R is risk. Uh, the second is resources, um, yeah, which is really more to do with the investor. They don't need much time, but they do need to spend a bit of time. You know, I'm not talking more than probably twenty minutes, but you know, you do need to read the research, and um, you know, you need to have an account and. and be willing to invest and be I think enthusiastic about investing as well um, and you know it, that, that's incredibly important you know I, I do get people who approach me and go, oh this is really interesting but I don't want to take any risk and you're like well you've got to take some risk and they they say well I don't like risk um, you know there's no guarantees this commodities are very volatile but they are they are tangible um, and then the third R is research uh, you need to know what to look for when you look for a mining company, which is one of the you know the key parts of, of, of what I do. And so I use a system I devised called the Bridge System, which is an acronym for balance sheet, resources, infrastructure, diversification, grade, and exploration potential. So when I actually write a company up uh, for the first time, I, I go through it looking at those different uh, aspects of the company and explain why I like them and quite often I'm writing a company up and I I go through that uh, that list and there's something in it that that sort of means I have to throw it out so I, I can spend quite a long a lot of time researching a company which I think on the face of it's good but then when you find there's something on, on the balance sheet or something about the resources or something about the grade that you don't like Unfortunately, you know, it doesn't pass muster. Um, so once they pass muster, that's when I tell you know, people about them. So you encourage investors to be enthusiastic. You encourage them to do their own research. But at the same time, do you also encourage them not to fall in love with their thesis and to keep reviewing? So if the fundamentals change and don't stack up, is it time to move on? Absolutely. I, I heard a lovely saying once, it's, uh, it was uh, never fall in love with something that can't love you back. And uh, I can assure you that commodity companies don't love you back. And um, it's quite interesting because there's a lot of psychology involved here. You know, if you're underwater, you don't really have a decision to make. You know, you, you, in most cases, you will you'll stick it out. But um, I had a classic case when Chalice had gone up about three, four hundred percent. And I had a call from a subscriber and they said you know thank you what you've done is amazing um i've never made 400 percent on a stock before and i said well what have you done and they said well well i've sold and i said well why have you sold i want you to make four thousand percent not 400 percent on it and um unfortunately psychologically it's very difficult to get back in if, if you bought in at 13 14 cents and then it's gone up to um you know 80 cents by the time you've got your head around buying back in at 80 cents, it's probably gone to 125. And by the time you're 125, it, you know, it's, it's probably gone to 200. And, you know, in Chalice's case, it went to over $10. $10. And um, so uh, psychologically, it's very, very difficult. And I've, I've got, you know, a couple at the moment where I've, I've said to people, look, just sell up. Well, I tell them what I'm doing. I've sold half and I've made several hundred percent. Um, but at least 
psychologically it, it's easier for me because if it moves around a lot um then you know I, I can sit from the sidelines and i've got my money back and i've already made a decent chunk of money um so um yeah it's it's it, it's it's not as easy as it sounds so how about this then you know even if you believe in long term do you recommend that people should trade the spikes and troughs with a percentage of their position because you might never know what might happen further down the line or up the line yeah i mean i know it's very difficult I, it's not something i um help people on um i think for me it's more imp important to have time in the market rather than timing the market and so um there are situations I, I go on at the moment um where i'm i bought in a i think it was two and a half cents it went up to 20 odd cents uh i sold out at about 13 it's now down at i think it was close to about eight eight point one cents last night um if it goes back down to four or five cents i may buy buy back in so i'm kind of that's trading a little bit i suppose but um I, I only buy on fundamentals and um so the only reason I'm buying back into that company potentially buying back into that company is I like fundamentals of it um but you do have to be very careful and um uh I, I think doing what you said about you know sort of just buying and 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 then sort of selling and buying and selling um it can work on certain stocks it can work very well but um, on others, you know, Chalice is a classic example. It can be an utter disaster because you, you know, you, you may you may sell at you know, eighty cents and then it goes up to ten bucks and you never get back in. And um, you know, since it's gone up to ten bucks, I don't think it's gone below seven. It might might have gone to six six bucks. But but all I'm saying is, anyone who followed that strategy on that stock, um, you know, would have been badly hurt. So yeah you have to be careful yeah and this is not a conversation about technical analysis i was just um picking picking your brains for free because you're right in front of me as being a bit mischievous so you've mentioned chalice quite a lot now this stock obviously doesn't define your career but you're obviously very proud of your involvement in it now i haven't heard of chalice before so um who are they what do they do why is the stock doing so well well it's interesting and um i you know someone once said to me don't think you're smart when you're lucky and um i'm afraid to say with chalice uh, i was extraordinarily lucky um basically they've got land next to fosterville fosterville is the highest grade most profitable gold mine in the world and so i thought if you got a junior with land next to fosterville at the time they had a market value i think of about uh 35 million and they had a, a, i think i can't remember exactly how much it was but i think they had about 10 million in cash and they had some amazing projects but this was the project i was most excited about um they then sold some projects in the antibia region in uh canada um which was uh which was exciting um because that meant that they weren't uh deploying any capital but if uh, I think they sold them to a Cisco, but if a Cisco found them, think that you know they would get a very nice return on on that sale. But they then went and found um, some precious metals, platinum, palladium, a whole load of other stuff in Junimar, which is uh, where are we? East of Perth, um, about um, I think it's a few hundred kilometres east of Perth. But that was just a massive find, and uh so sort of really once in a generation type find but um it took the shares um you know ridiculously high and uh you know wh when things take off i mean I, I think chalice went up about 65 times from when i told people about it uh if you got in a bit earlier you probably closer to 75 80 um but that's that's the lovely thing about these mining stocks if you get it right um and i think that's a bit of an exception to be honest but you can still make 10 20 30 times your money um and um you know i've got mines of money in london which actually starts today i'm going there tomorrow but um 
I kind of that's really good for me because it, it it means that I speak to a lot of these junior mining companies and um, you know, using the kind of research techniques that, that I've just outlined, um, I kind of look at them through that lens. And some of them don't really pass muster, but others are really interesting. And it's those interesting ones that I, you know, share with subscribers. Be interesting to see what percentage of mines and money is devoted to EV, the electric vehicle revolution and the commodities that are needed for that industry, for that sector. So are you anticipating that EV is going to be a big theme? And how much of your portfolio is invested in EV? Well, interestingly, I'm actually sitting on a panel tomorrow to discuss exactly that, uh, battery metals. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I've got, uh, I don't know, probably about 25% of my portfolio is um, stuff connected with EVs, but, um, you know, for example, I've got some lithium plays, but I've got some zinc plays as well and copper plays. And, um, you know, I, I think you need to have broad exposure um, to, um, to all markets. You know, you don't want, I mean, the other thing I like about commodities is this, there's a bit of a FX foreign exchange play on it as well, because not only am I investing across different commodities, but also across different currencies, because Australia, US, Canada. Um, now, for me as an investor, I've got huge exposure to sterling because of my own house and investments in the UK. So I quite like the idea of having uh, exposure to other commodities and other currencies. So, um, you know, should anything happen to pound sterling, um, I don't have all my eggs in that basket. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Now, in terms of baskets, in the bas the master investor basket, um, we um, will be accompanying this, this podcast with a presentation that you've made. And you've given us a great discount code, which we're very grateful for, Simon Popple. Thank you very much. I don't know whether you can remember offhand what it is whilst I've got you. I've got it here. Um... But basically what I'm doing is I'm offering um, a discount to, you, you can get the subscription at um, last year's price. So if you enter the code master with an uppercase M, then uh, you can get a 12 month subscription for four, four, five pounds rather than this year's price, which is five, four, five. Um, and, um, you know, hopefully some people will, will take that up. Uh, if, if you want to just, put a toe in the water, you can always go for a monthly subscription, which I think is about £59.50. But, um, uh, you know, having done this for Money Week and Agora for, for many years, um, I kind of learnt quite a lot. And um, as I say, we've had some good results, so hopefully we can have a few more. You're very kind. And to think I started off our conversation talking about inflation, but here you are with an offer that is inflation busting. That's <laughs> what we're all about. Simon Popple, thank you very much indeed. It's been an absolute pleasure and um, I'm going to follow your advice and hopefully retire earlier than expected. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much.